What up, HyperChange? Welcome to a new episode. Today, we're gonna talk about the bull case for Facebook. The stock has been on an absolute tear since the Cambridge Analytica scandal. As I'm making this, is trading around $195 per share, right near all-time highs. So I thought this would be a cool time to articulate why I'm so bullish on the underlying fundamentals of Facebook, and I believe the company could be worth well over a trillion dollars in the very near future. So we're gonna break down each of the components of Facebook's different businesses, and then I'm gonna go into the overall valuation. So first, let's start with Facebook, the core platform you all know and probably use. Maybe you love it, maybe you hate it. Despite this whole, you know, data privacy, Cambridge Analytica concerns has continued to grow in the wake of that. It's almost mind-boggling to comprehend that nearly, you know, 1.5 billion people out of 7 billion people on the entire planet are logging into Facebook every single day. This makes it larger than the world's largest countries. Just staggering to comprehend the scope of this platform. In terms of monthly active users, Facebook has nearly 2.2 billion. And as you can see, the growth doesn't really appear to be stopping either. I think there are a lot of legs left in this core Facebook platform. And what's so interesting about Facebook and their core desktop product is I believe that Facebook could grow without Facebook growing. Now, let me explain that. Facebook could dramatically grow the revenue from its core platform without growing its user base. What is the reason behind that? The cost per impression of the advertisements on its newsfeed is, I believe, going to go up dramatically dramatically over the next few years. A little bit of insight why I'm so bullish on the tidal wave of capital that is going to come into the Facebook advertising products. I'm going to play you guys some clips from Gary Vaynerchuk. For those of you guys who don't know who he is, he is Gary V. He's a vlogger. He's also an angel investor who has an unbelievable track record. He's invested in Uber, Venmo, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. The guy is a social media savant. By day, he runs VaynerMedia, which is one of the world's largest social media advertising agencies. So he is literally meeting with the world's biggest brands, telling them where to spend their advertising dollars. I think this gives him tremendous insight into the future of digital advertising. And so that is why I'm, I'm just a huge overall fan of his vlog and his videos. My friends, ABC and NBC and CBS are out of business as we know them. Television commercial industry is $80 billion. $80 billion this year on making and distributing 30 and 15 second videos that are played in between TV shows and nobody's watching. 92% of the Fortune 500 companies in the CPG space, consumer packaged goods, Cheerios, Cool Whip, Hellman's, this lipstick, that lipstick, that cereal, that soda, 92, 93% have declined over the last two years. Why? Because they pour all their money into commercials. We've got another 24, 36 months and then the ceiling and the floor is gonna break. And all that money is going to go into Facebook. Mark my fucking words. Facebook and Instagram are streams, right? There's only so much real estate. Facebook and Instagram's only asset in society is your attention. The reason the algorithm is the way that it is is because if they keep showing you dumb shit, and you don't like it, you're gonna leave. But here's the problem with the algorithm. There's only so many pictures and videos. And right now, we're just competing amongst ourselves. I'm the alpha, I'm the biggest invested, it's why I'm growing the fastest. Others in here are doing solid, decent, or nothing at all, and that is a direct correlation to your success, and more importantly, your future success. Here's the problem, my friends. Coca-Cola and BMW and Comcast and the Eagles and GE and the biggest companies in the world haven't invested properly into the feed yet. The feed is just one feed. Right now it costs eight or nine dollars to get in front of a thousand people. Soon it's going to cost 50 and 90 and 200. And you're gonna sit and cry that you weren't doing more of this just like I cry that I didn't spend more money on Google AdWords from 2001 to 2004 when they were grossly underpriced. 80, let me say it nice and slow, $80 billion is spent in the making and distributing of TV commercials in America a year. And all of it's going directly in the fucking garbage. When Pepsi and Kellogg's and Kraft and BMW finally feel the pain of them throwing money directly in the trash, which is coming, they will switch it. And it will come into this nice little place known Facebook and Instagram and everything else. If I could leave here with anything, 
it would be to get you to understand how much of a gold rush the underpriced attention on Facebook and Instagram is. Attention is the asset. Everything works, but what about the price? I can run a lot of television and people would know about me, but that would cost millions instead of tens of thousands for the same thing. The gist of this is, there is $80 billion still being pumped into legacy television commercials that is about to pivot into social media. I'm so in line with Gary's vision here that nobody is watching TV commercials anymore. The second a commercial comes on on the TV, you're pulling out your phone and you're scrolling through your feed. That is where the attention is, but big brands haven't completely capitalized on this opportunity. And as they capitalize it, the demand for the finite supply of time in your newsfeed is going to skyrocket and this is going to lead to dramatically rising CPMs. CPM stands for the cost per a thousand impressions of an advertising product, which right now on the Facebook platform is growing like crazy. So don't just take Gary Vee's word for it. If you actually look at this data that I found, the CPM rate for Facebook was up over 90% in Q1 2018. So I think this is a trend that is very early in its infancy and we're gonna see Facebook's CPM rise dramatically in the coming years. And, and, and even further evidence of this beyond just third-party data of the CPM is Facebook's average revenue per user has been skyrocketing throughout the years. They're continually doing a better and better job at monetizing each user as more and more people realize the value of Facebook's platform. At a high level, why is it so much more valuable for, for people to advertise on Facebook than on TV? It's all about data. Facebook knows so much more about who's watching the ads and therefore has so much more targeting ability than anything in traditional media or legacy media that that alone is just a massive advantage and allows for micro targeting it allows for way better insight, it allows for way better analytics, it allows for way better understanding the ROI of your ads. And all of this, I think, is gonna to amount to just a tidal wave shift like Gary Vee is talking about that is coming in to the social media platforms. Facebook is gonna get the bulk of that with their core platform and Instagram. So now let's talk about Instagram, Facebook's potentially most exciting asset. And I think this is a little uh, funny tidbit. I made an episode a couple months ago in April 2018 saying that Instagram was worth $100 billion and growing, laid out the financials and the case for why I thought that was. Then in just this week, Bloomberg reports with you know this big headline, Instagram is potentially worth $100 billion. And they don't even tell you how they got to that valuation. But anyway, my point being, Bloomberg is always about two months behind hyperchange. Anyway, Anyway, Instagram is a monster in the making. It is the it social network of the moment. And as bullish as I am as the continued monetization of Facebook's core platform, I'm even more bullish on Instagram. With the recent launch of IGTV, there was another tidbit of news thrown out there, which is that Instagram has crossed a billion monthly active users. That makes it almost half the size of Facebook's core platform, and it is growing like crazy. At first, they were just sort of competing head on with Facebook as a photo sharing product, but now they are morphing into so much beyond on that and I believe we are starting to see the tentacles of Instagram go into a ton more exciting businesses. For instance, you know, just a year or two ago, Instagram replicated Snapchat's stories feature. We just got news that their stories product has more than 400 million daily active users, more than double what Snapchat has in the product that it invented. Another thing they're getting into is video. They just launched IGTV, which is a vertical format, mobile first version of YouTube. You know, it's still a little too early to see if that's actually going to gain traction and be successful, but this this has insane potential to be sort of a complementary or, or maybe even YouTube competitor in the long term. YouTube, in my opinion, is worth 100 billion, maybe more. So that just gives you a scope of why IGTV could be so, so important in the future. Additionally, the other dark horse that Instagram has that not enough people are talking about is e-commerce. This to me is, is could be one of the most exciting things on the entire platform. Right now, they do have shopping on Instagram, but it takes like six or seven clicks to actually buy a product and you get taken out of the app into a browser. I think the second that Instagram makes that frictionless and allows you to do two taps to buy a product that you see in your feed, they're going to start cutting out a dramatic amount of business from Amazon and Shopify, and they're going to become an, a behemoth in e-commerce overnight. I mean, the amount of fashion brands, makeup brands, clothing, you know, products of all sorts, shapes and sizes that are on Instagram is mind boggling. I follow all of my favorite companies there. It would be so frictionless to buy products from them right through my feed. So in short, taking a step back, I think Instagram 
Instagram, even though I, it's worth about 100 billion today and growing in the long term, in my opinion, could be worth hundreds of billions, maybe even a trillion dollars as a standalone company. You heard it here first. They're attacking Facebook, which is a company worth hundreds of billions of dollars on its own. They're attacking Snapchat, a product that is already worth, you know, $20 billion and Instagram has doubled the users of that. Now with IGTV, they're going against YouTube, another hundred billion dollars. And then Amazon and Shopify is another multi hundred billion dollar digital e-commerce opportunity. In terms of revenue, this is the best data that I could get for Instagram 2015 through 2018. The data is from Statistica, which is an awesome platform. I'll put a link in the description. I extrapolated the revenue growth from there. And as you can see, I think Instagram in the next three years could potentially hit $30 billion in revenue. Anyway, moving on from Instagram, you guys can tell why I'm so excited about that. Oculus Rift. Now this is something that's a little bit further down the road, but I think virtual reality is undoubtedly going to be a huge part of the future and a way we interact and use social platforms maybe five or 10 years down the road. So Facebook developing a leading position in virtual reality could be incredibly important for the long term. I try to do some research into how many units Oculus was actually selling. According to data from Statista, it looks like they're doing about 700,000 units in 2017. They're projected to sell about a million units of their products in 2018. It's about a couple hundred bucks a unit. So that is already a couple hundred million dollars in revenue, but I think that is just getting started. And the Holy Grail is not selling Oculus as a standalone product for gaming or et cetera, but the Holy Grail is selling Oculus as a virtual reality product to really immerse yourself in these social platforms like Instagram and Facebook. And I think this will all tie together eventually. And so I think Oculus is something that you also have to watch and sort of keep on the back burner as this epic moonshot play that Facebook has on virtual reality, which could eventually become, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars as well, so this ties together the three most important things about Facebook. I know they own WhatsApp and a bunch of other little tiny stuff too, but the three things that I am focusing on right now are Facebook's core platform, Instagram, then you have Oculus, the future of virtual reality. So I think that should get you very excited about the company. Now let's dive into the, fa the financials and valuation because this is where it gets even more exciting. Facebook, as you can tell, is you know an incredibly profitable and growing company. They did $41 billion in revenue with $20 billion of profit in 2017, because the company is just so profitable, they've been piling up absurd amounts of cash on their balance sheet. They had about $42 billion at the end of 2017. My projection is they'll end this year with around $55 billion in cash and zero debt. That gives them a ton of money to play with. That means there isn't just a chance in hell they would go bankrupt. Now let's talk about the future. I used to think that in 2018, Facebook was going to do about $56 billion in revenue. Q1 growth was incredibly strong. I've had to up that to $58 billion in revenue, assuming about 43% percent growth. Then I assume that the operating margin is about 46%, which is actually lower than it has been to get that 27 billion in earnings number. Now let's extrapolate this all the way through 2020. As you can see, I, although these numbers look pretty crazy, I actually think they're conservative. This model has Facebook going across $100 billion in revenue by 2020, producing about $49 billion of operating profit. Now, a little bit more on why I think these could be conservative. I'm pricing in a pretty severe slowdown in revenue here. Just to give you guys a little bit of flavor, revenue growth in Q1 was actually 49% and had accelerated a little bit. So I'm only assuming 43% for the full year and then going below 40% in 2019 and 2020. These numbers could be proved to be far too low. Additionally, I've assumed that the operating margin stagnated at 46%, which is lower than it was last year. And the trend is that the operating margin has been improving with scale. So this could also be a low ball as well. But those assumptions tie me into this financial model, which has Facebook scaling to 100 billion in revenue, 49 billion in profit in 2020. Now let's talk valuation. Relative to the 2018 financials with 3.1 billion shares outstanding, 195 bucks a share, Facebook is trading out of a $605 billion market cap. Divided by 58 billion in my expected revenue, we're looking at about 10.4 times price sales, which seems pricey, but remember, Facebook's profitable AF. 605 billion divided by 27 billion in EBIT. We're looking at only a 22.4 times earnings ratio for a company that is growing at 43% this year to see their earnings, their price earnings ratio only be at 22X is incredibly cheap. That's a peg ratio of about 0.5 for you finance nerds out there, which is as good as it gets, especially for this high quality of a business. If we take a look at 2019, what they're, I think they're gonna do next year, according to my estimate of 80 billion in 2019 revenue, we're looking at about 7.6 times price sales. We're looking at 16 0.3 times earnings. 
The stock market as a whole right now is trading around 17 or 18 times EBIT. This is a rock bottom multiple for a company that in my estimates will be growing 38% in 2019. Now, if we go to 2020, 605 billion divided by an estimate of 107 billion in 2020 revenue, look about 5.6 times price sales and 605 billion divided by my estimate for 49 billion in operating income, we're looking at a 12.3 times price EBIT ratio. So what I wanted to illustrate with this point is when you have a company like Facebook, Facebook that is growing so rapidly, both earnings and profits, it is getting cheaper to invest in by the day. That is just a huge tailwind you have at the back. Literally every day you're holding on to Facebook stock, the, the valuation is just getting cheaper and cheaper. And that's, I don't think that's sustainable. I think as Facebook continues to grow, continues to compound their earnings and revenue, we're going to continue to see the market cap climbing. And I actually think we could even see multiple expansion. I think 22 times price earnings is way too cheap for a business like Facebook. I think it should be well over 30 because that is what their growth rate is. I mean, just to put things in context is Facebook was valued at a trillion dollars today divided by my $27 billion in 2018 earnings estimates. That's only 37 times earnings. And that's for a company growing at 43% this year. So that's still under a one times peg ratio, even if Facebook was valued at a trillion dollars today. So I believe Facebook could be trading at a trillion dollars in the near term. And you know, it's important for me to, to state, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. Hyperchange is never financial advice. It's just me saying what I think and my opinion. When I say I think a company is worth this, I don't necessarily think the stock will trade there because the market is irrational. Who the hell knows what the market's going to do? I can't predict it, but I can say just looking at the fundamentals and financials of Facebook, I believe a fair value for the company is a trillion dollars today. And that is only going to increase as they ramp monetization in their core platform. Instagram continues to kick ass and Oculus leads us into the virtual reality future. Anyway, this is hyper change. I would love to know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you as bullish on Facebook as me? I don't actually own the stock because I, I'm all in Tesla and I don't really have any other money to invest. But also, frankly, I really like to invest in companies that I think are building something that I want to see in the future. That's why I love Tesla, electric cars, big batteries, solar panels. I think we need to go sustainable. And I think being a part of that mission is really inspiring to me. I couldn't say the same for Facebook. You know, what they did with Cambridge Analytica, these data privacy concerns, you know, you are the product. They are selling your data. There could eventually be a huge backlash there with that. I don't know. I just morally, I, I'm not as excited excited about what Facebook is building. So that's why I'm less excited about personally investing in the company. Although from a just strictly financial standpoint, I think it is pretty clear what's going to happen to the valuation going forward. If you like HyperChange, definitely check out our Patreon page to support. We have a premium newsletter that goes out every Sunday. That is awesome. Uh, also giving away free merch on there. And also wanted to give a huge shout out to everyone who has recently joined to support on Patreon. It means so much to me. HyperChange is getting super close to actually being able to pay my rent and pay for my food and make this a self-sustaining business, which would just be like a total dream come true. So thank you guys so much for all supporting. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.